Hello, good afternoon. I'm Ross Ellis, founder and CEO of Stomp Out Bullying. And I'm very excited to welcome Dr. Jeff Gardier. Dr. Jeff is one of the most widely sought after experts in the field of mental health. In addition to having a private practice here in Manhattan, he is an associate professor and course director of behavior, behavioral medicine at Toro College of Osteopathic Medicine here in New York City. Better known as America's psychologist, he is also a prolific author of four books and can regularly be seen on the Today Show, CNN, MSNBC, and numerous TV shows. Um, given that, that it's Mental Health Month, we would like to arm kids and really um, give them the tools they need so that they're not upset or, you know, they're going through a lot. So we, we want to know, Dr. Jeff, welcome. Um, Thank you, Ross, for having me. Always. Hi, everybody. Hello, oh, everybody. He's my sidekick. There you go. There you go. How are young people impacted emotionally by the dreaded COVID-19? All right. So we know that um, young people, Ross, can be very resilient. Uh, and for a very long time, uh, we just didn't give them uh, the resources that they needed to understand the importance of mental health. Um, they pretty much did it on their own. Uh, but then, of course, what you talked about, the pandemic came along. Uh, and as we know, it dramatically, dramatically increased uh, the rates of anxiety and depression for adults but it also did the same thing for young people. As a matter of fact, we saw their rates were really skyrocketing with regard to anxiety, depression, uh, acute stress disorders, um, not to mention, of course, that they lost an average of four months of, uh, of uh, gains in mathematical uh, instruction and in reading instruction for grade schools. It interrupted uh, their uh, learning of social skills and interpersonal skills. Uh, and we saw uh, actual uh, rates of uh, emergency room visits uh, actually skyrocket uh, for mental health issues, um, as well as, um, you know, uh, issues having to do with self-harm um, right. amongst young people. So it really has affected young people. Yes, they are resilient but it's a pandemic for heaven's sake. And I think that we are sometimes a little bit too adaptable or too much in denial as to the fact that this is a once in a lifetime horrific event where mm -hmm. close to 980,000 lives in the United States alone were lost. And right. so all of those things actually impact all of us and impact our children. So true. How, how do you think young people were impacted academically? I mean, you, you touched on it a little bit. Sure. Well, yeah, we talked about those rates um, uh, around mm -hmm. arithmetic, uh, around science, around reading and so on. But the other thing that I think is important for people to understand, school is not just about reading, writing and arithmetic, right? School is a safe place where they're able to learn uh, how to uh, fit in with others how they're able to learn about themselves, how they can be individualistic, um, uh, who they really are, their place in the world. And that, of course, was kind of obliterated uh, during COVID in that uh, kids had to social distance, they had to quarantine, they had to stay home, they had to deal with the passing of, uh, of loved ones, right. uh, and they weren't able to see their friends. So it's been really, really difficult for young people. Right. Dr. Jeff, we have a question. Do you want to do questions after or? We can no? do them. We can do them right now. Absolutely. Okay. Um, Tara says her grandson is depressed. He used to like school. He's 16 now and doesn't really like it. Yeah. So, so what we found out, thank you, Tara, for sharing that. What we found out is that we also have a huge statistic of uh, young people who have not returned to school some who want to stay at home because 
Uh, they just don't feel that they can make the transition back. And so a lot of uh, young people were disillusioned around, um, you know, losing, you know, their friends and, you know, the feeling of being in school. So your grandson is not alone. But here's what school does offer and Tara White's important that even though he may not want to really be in school, you've got to keep him in, in school because it gives him the discipline. It gives him, you know, certainly, you know, the, the, the interpersonal skills. Uh, it gives him, you know, the feeling of being around other people and being supported by other people. And there's also something called a school counselor. So it's really important that not only should he be taking his classes and should be getting the support of those around him uh, and a normalization of being with other people, but seeing the school counselor. And I would advise, of course, that not just the school counselors who he should be talking to, but also getting him a therapist and if need be, uh, a, a, a psychiatrist or psychiatric nurse practitioner to look at if possibly it's not just therapy, but maybe, you know, um, psychiatric medication may be helpful too. But here's the good news, Tara. The younger a person is, the quicker you get them the help, the, the better the prognosis. So, you know, stay there, make it work. You know, you can bring, you know, there, there's this, you know, there are a lot of stigmas out there, Ross, about, you know, mental, you know, right. health uh, issues that people don't get better. People can absolutely get better from anxiety and depression. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Tara from California says, hello, Dr. Jeff. Yes, I see. That's I'm sorry, Sarah. Sarah. That's Sarah. Sarah Ruth. Hi, Sarah. How are you? I love <laughs> California, by the way, you know. Um, that sunshine, that vitamin D is really good for you. And it brings up a very important point, Sarah, even uh, for those of us on the East Coast who may not have, be having the great weather, it's important to get some sunshine, wear your sunblock, of course, but that vitamin D really does make people feel better. Exactly. That's why people are moving and grooving in LA and they're on their roller skates all the time. Right. Hey. <laughs> Dr. Jeff. How are young people impacted interpersonally by this dreaded COVID-19? What skills do you think they lost? Well, certainly, uh, as we talked about, Ross, uh, they lost some of the skills on making friendships uh, for our, you know, our young people who are coming out, who may be LGBTQ+. Um, they didn't have that sa uh, safe uh, space and you know, support group and, you know, people who are like them, who they can say, hey, please support me as I come out. Um, you know, I want to be in the world. And so doing that just from your home is not the easiest thing at all, right? You want to be with other young people who can support you, who understand what it is uh, that, you know, you need to do in order to come out. But it's also, you know, any kind of dating rituals, any kind of friendship rituals, all of those things we learn in school. And so that's why it's so important. We don't learn it from our parents as, as well, but we learn it from school. Uh, and that's why school is a place that we need young people to be. You know, I, you know I'm, I, I have six children, Ross. You know, I'm like the old man. Yes, I'm like the old man in the shoe. You're I have a brave man. I don't know what to do. So, you know, I've seen with every, I have three generations of children. They all love school because it was just a place to be. And my youngest children, my seven-year-old and my five-year-old, um, oh. yeah, when they were not, and I'm a senior citizen, right? When they were not uh, able to go to school, they were so angry. And, and I know many of you listening saw this with your own kids, right? And many of the young people watching, you know, people got really angry. Young people got really angry because that was where they were living their lives. You know, you know, older people love being at work. Younger people love being at school. So, you know, we saw a lot of anger. We saw a lot of isolation. We saw a lot of depression by not being around <laughs> friends, being in school, learning, being with their beloved teachers. Right. Um, Lori from Springfield, Illinois says hello. I've been to Springfield, Illinois, Lori. It's a beautiful, beautiful uh, place. So hello to you there. Uh, and I hope you get some warmer weather soon. <clears throat> That's right. Dr. Jeff, what should kids and teens do if they're feeling stressed, depressed, overwhelmed, 
out of control, panicky, and unable to calm down. Well, this is where the school counselor comes in. School counselor, by the way, the school counselor used to be the person whose uh, office was down the hall uh, and no one talked to the school counselor. Now we're seeing everyone's talking to the school counselor, they're talking to the school nurse. They are now uh, in many ways teaching how uh, the all, all the professionals in the schools to talk to one another, to help children through a lot of these difficulties. So definitely the school counselor is an important person uh, you know, to, to be with. We're training our teachers to deal with mental health challenges. Um, and But specifically with your question, uh, for young people who really feel kind of out of control, they feel angry and so on, I think it's really important that they be able to touch base with other kids, uh, form a support group for one another, let their needs be known uh, as to what it is that they are experiencing, Talk to your parents, let your parents know how you feel. And most importantly, your teacher is your conduit. That is the person who can hook you up with the different services. So you could talk about what that anger feels like, what the isolation feels like, maybe what even the depression feels like. Right. And also too, I mean, a parent may feel more comfortable taking their child to a private therapist. And there are many around. There are even free clinics available. If, if parents can't afford it. So I think it's really important. Get your kids help no matter what. It's exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And, and look, you know, uh, I know I'm preaching to the choir when we talk to Lori, when we talk to Sarah, when we talk to Tara, when we talk to all of the folks who are joining us, because they already know, hey, this is a place for us to find out how to care for the mental health of young people and people in general. So they're already in the mindset, okay, let's get some help, you know, for our youngsters, for ourselves and so on. But I think it's really important to point out that as parents, um, we need to be role models. We need to be mentors. We need to be able to show our kids that yes, we're going through it too. We're getting help. We're getting counseling. We talk to one another. Uh, and therefore, if we can do it, you can do it too. It's not a secret. I have uh, dealt with mental health challenges my whole life. Hypochondriasis, which is the unreasonable fear of getting illness, generalized anxiety uh, disorder or free floating anxiety and obsessive compulsive disorder, you know, constantly checking things and so on. So Ross, you know, I've had those challenges, you know, Ross, you've been through. Yeah. So it's important for us as adults to express to our children that it is not a sign of weakness to admit when you're having your own mental health struggles. Right. And even if it's coming from bullying and, and not the COVID thing and all of that, Bullying, of course, causes much more stress. But with with that, there are certain things that you can do. We suggest doing comebacks so that if you're standing in front of your bully and the bully says, oh, I, I don't like the sweater you're wearing, you could just look at them and say, oh, I didn't even realize you noticed. Who asked you? And walk away. But I know you have some ideas too. Well, if a bully said, I don't like the sweater that you're wearing, I would say, well, I like the sweater that you're wearing. It's really nice. Can you tell me where you got your sweater? I really yeah. would like to know that. You know, yeah. maybe you'd like to share your sweater with me. Hey, by the way, thank you for talking about my sweater. I didn't really like it anyway. Look, there's a way for us to flip the script and trick the devil because when a bully says something like that to you, it means that what they're really saying is I want to know you. I need to connect with you. I, I'm feeling terrible about myself, so I'm picking on you. But you can Thank say, you. hey, you know what? I love you. So if you want to pick on me, as long as you don't touch me, as long as you don't say anything that's negative, mm -hmm. I really want to get to know you. Let me share an example with you, Ross. Um, I was uh, driving down the road. Uh, I accidentally accidentally cut off another driver. I, and, and, and it was, it was accidental. I'm not an aggressive driver. The guy rolled right up to my side, okay. you know, sped up, rolled down his window and said, what the heck is wrong with you? I apologized. And I said, I'm sorry, brother. I didn't see you, but there is a lot that's wrong with me. You know, I've got all of these issues I'm dealing with. I'm paying all these bills. It's tough. It's a jungle out there. Do you know the guy just laughed and he said, yes, I know what you mean. Nice right. to meet you. And he drove off. 
the human but, but spirit. See, most people would not handle it that way because I've seen people with road rage and it's unbelievable. So I'm glad you did, but I know you would. Um, sad news that um, Naomi Judd took her life by suicide the other day. Yes. And it's just tragic. Yes. What do we, what what should you do if your kid or teen feels suicidal, talks about suicide? What's the best thing to do? Well, first of all, don't dismiss it as well. You know, it's just a suicidal gesture, or they're just thinking about it. You know, gesture might be just cutting themselves, but not enough to hurt themselves. Don't play with that. Someone, please call nine one one. Get that child to a hospital. If the right. child is That's talking hard. about, yeah. right. If they're talking about hurting themselves, get them to a hospital. Don't mess around with that at all, or they'll work it out, or they just want to get attention. Get them to a hospital and get them evaluated. There are suicide uh, hotlines that Ross always posts and she works with. So Ross, you'll give them more the information. Suicide lifeline. We'll post it. Yep, exactly. So, but you know, if someone is is suicidal. Make sure that they get help right away. By the way, I knew Miss Judd. I met her. You know, I talked with her uh, when she had a show way back when on the Hallmark Channel. Um, you know, she's been through a lot in her life. But let me tell you, depression does not discriminate. She right. had a lot of money. She was a legend. But it was still difficult for her to get through her depression. Right. Right. So that's why it's important. Anyone who's suicidal, get them help right away. I think um, we have one lot. Well, we have Sarah Ruth says so she's suffering from a learning disability and she's feeling anxious mm -hmm. when driving or riding in a car, um, which affects her driving. Uh, that's a, that happens to a friend of mine too. Okay, so, um, so we have some tips for you. Sarah, uh, one of the things you can do Okay, I'm not sure what your learning disability is, and you don't really have to share that. But here's, and by the way, there should be no shame in your game about having a learning disability, okay? We're all neurodiverse as far as I'm concerned. Right. But one of the things you can do is instead of taking long drives or getting out on the highway, you know, take local roads that may have you feel safer. Drive only in your neighborhood until you gain more confidence and get a partner to ride with you uh, who, when you're having that learning disability or you're feeling that anxiety, who can talk you down. Having that support is really important, okay? So that will, that that I think can really work for you. And and, and Lisa uh, has something here, uh, Ross, that you might want right, to- Right, I see that. I'm so sorry, Lisa. She lost her 13-year-old son by suicide. He was four days past his 12th birthday. He never talked about it they kids usually will not talk about it. Yes. And, you know, first of all, Lisa, um, you know, along with Ross, my most sincere condolences. Um, and, you know, you know, I, you know, my prayers are with you and your family. Uh, it's, you know, for a parent to bury a child is completely unnatural. Um, and especially someone that young. So Lisa, yes, I will talk about this. You said, please speak to the fact they do not always speak about it. So yes, there are clues uh, in their music and their behavior. If they're listening to music that may be, you know, very dark and that's all they listen to, or they're listening to music that's about sadness or that speaks to depression, that speaks to suicide, that speaks to loss. Uh, that's something that you definitely should look into and ask them, why are you listening to that kind of music and what does it mean? It's not to say that that music is bad, but if that's all they're listening to, that can be a reflection as to what it is that they are feeling. Other hidden signs are if they are isolating themselves, if they don't want to talk about the future uh, because they don't feel that they have a future. If they're Walking giving, away from their computer. Uh, right, right. If they're giving away uh, their possessions, um, if they uh, actually talk to you about, you know, they don't know whether they're going to be around in another week or two. And also know that anyone who has a history of suicidal gestures or ideation 
is really at risk for mm -hmm. actual suicide. So there are a lot of things. Sometimes it's anger that they may have. We call that acting out. If they're crying, if they don't have any friends, um, if they are, you know, writing about just sad, sad things, all of those are, you know, clear signals that they do need help. It may not mean that they're suicidal, but it certainly may mean that you need to make an intervention. Right, right. Um, it's time to wrap up. We hope you'll join us next week at the same time. Um, stompoutbullying.org. We have a help chat line for kids 13 to 24. They can speak to trained counselors who Dr. Jeff actually trained. Um, so sorry about that. Um, and then we also have uh, posted up here the suicide prevention lifeline. So if please reach out for these sources. You know, it's it's critical. It really is. Um, keep your kids happy and healthy. Thank you for joining us. Bye, Dr. Jeff.